No, it was, it was a wrong decision. And <clears throat> it, it was brought about with, uh, in the dark of night, and Jeff knows this, I, we've talked about Actually, this. Actually, I, I disagree with you because there was numerous amount of debate on it. Well, so there was amount it, of debate that didn't occur when, when, when the rules were suspended and, and the leadership was rolled. But if I may, uh, did, it, anything that has to be done in, in the middle of the night and the dark of the night it, it is not a good thing. It's not the way we do business in Arizona. Maybe they do it that way in, in Chicago and Illinois. They don't do it here. The problem with, with as I see it, with Medicaid expansion is that it, 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 it I'd say it immortalizes Obamacare in, in our state. And um, it, it, you can't solve problems by throwing money at, at things. Now, I understand there's a problem with funding our, our, uh, our health care. I understand that. But there's ways, that, this is where leadership comes in. There, there, there may be better ways to do it, at least to, to, to look at it. The, the thing is, what has happened now is, is the, the money that, that the hospitals are receiving now are, are coming from the taxpayers. Now, if you go back, you look at the hospital, and my father-in-law just got out of the hospital, so I can attest to this. You, why do you pay $10 for an aspirin in the hospital, okay? And why, do you, why are the exorbitant fees in, in, in the hospital? Uh, that's to offset the, 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 uh, the people who can't pay for their treatment in the hospitals. So now, since this has been in place, I know the hospitals are getting, uh, are getting the money, and, 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 but I don't see the price of aspirins dropping. I, I don't see these exorbitant prices dropping. So to me, that, that tells me that, that this, this thing, this is, this is not working, this is, and it's not going to work. In three years, when the federal money goes away, what are we going to do? Uh, we, we're either going to be bankrupt, uh, or we, we're going to cut schools, we're going to cut first responders. What are we going to do? How are we going to do, or do we just take the poison pill and it goes away? And now all of these people have, no longer have coverage. That, that, that was, it was wrong, it was wrong-minded, and I, I believe it is really something that we, we, need, to, we need to get rid of. This is not good. Yes, it was absolutely the right decision. And the reason it was the right decision is you're looking at it. The voters in 96 and in 2000 told the state legislature that we were going to fund Medicaid. So the question going forward is, and I'm a person who believes that you need to be following this, the Constitution. The Constitution lays out an initiative process by which the voters can direct the legislature and their government how to govern. So looking at that, we knew uh, from past court cases that if we didn't go and fund Medicaid, and, and just let me point out, one of the things you learn when you're in government is that you have to go solve problems. So we had the problem of funding this. And so we had basically two major choices. Go bankrupt, the alternative proposal I heard down there uh, from people was we go drain the rainy day fund for our emergency fund to fund a continuing program, which was Medicaid. Or we could take money coming from the federal government. So you're looking at the bankrupt, bankruptcy of the state or taking the money which we already take over $20 billion from the federal government. So it was an easy choice to make. It wasn't a fun choice because there was a lot of rhetoric spread around that. So uh, solve that problem um, and come four years from now, you never know what the future is, but I do know that we'd be bankrupt today. So when you're looking at the fiscally conservative thing to do, I voted for the most fiscally conservative budget that was in front of us down there and we ended up helping people out there, which all the voters had mandated that we do, so we solved the problem. So I think it was absolutely the right thing to do. And let's see if I'm touching anything else. Uh, oh, uh, the, he had mentioned, my opponent here, that uh, uh, Tom, <laughs> all right, that, that, that works. Good job. Uh, <laughs> gentleman on my right, Tom. <laughs> Jeff Dial, for those who are out there viewing. Um, I was going to say is there had been numerous debate. I had attended forums. I think there was many opportunities. And you, you hear the gentleman on my right didn't offer up a solution there. He said there must be a solution out there. I think that when you look at how we do the program, it's the most free market way we can do it. We have the fourth lowest cost program in the nation. I think for a lot of states around the country, it didn't make, state, make sense. But when you look at the mandate, 
from our voters, it absolutely made sense. And um, it, the way it's set up is it's a managed care system here in the state. So people are going and using, who are in Medicaid, are using the same hospitals that we're all using because we many times at the state contract with uh, companies who are holding the cost down, just like our own insurance companies if you had United or Blue Cross Blue Shield. So it's a, a great program. It's many times cited as the model program, our program here in the state, across the country. Uh, I know all the Republican governors I've heard out there talk about the program. I've heard them many times talk about Arizona being the model program. And so because of that, you know, I followed the governor's lead. I questioned it at first, but after I investigated, it made the, uh, absolute sense and it was the right thing to do.